Hi, and welcome to the presentation on the Classified and Confidential's Monthly Electronic Timesheet System, or if you acronym it, um, CMET. What we'll be talking about today will be information on the changes in the way that you will report time now that we have this new system in place, some information on navigation, how to get to the system and use it in the most easy way possible, and then I will do a walkthrough of the steps that you'll take in order to get to and enter the timesheet. So as I mentioned, there are some changes in the way that you will report time. We've always done a paper timesheet that's been a projection of the month ahead and then corrections after the fact. But from now on, you'll be filling out your timesheet for the month just ending. So therefore, instead of estimating your time and projecting your time, you're actually going to report your actual time and the leaves that you took in the month just ended. So we'll open the system on the 25th of each month and you can enter your time but submit your timesheet only on the last day you work in that month. So don't estimate your schedule, report your actual time. You could think you're working for the last you know, three or four days of the month and then you submit it but then something happens, you need to take some personal time or some sick time and you've already submitted your time. So like I said, don't estimate your schedule. You'll probably hear that a few more times because it's key to the change in the way the timesheet system works. So let's go over the steps that we're going to explain in detail following this one slide. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use Chrome as your browser, log into my gateway, then go to the employee tab. Once you get to the employee tab, click on the icon for CMET. It looks like um, the icon you saw on the first page of this presentation. Then you click on the staff monthly timesheet icon and that'll take you to the timesheet itself. The timesheet that will be available will be the one that's available for the month you're trying to fill out. You will then fill it out for the month just ending. You can add explanations related to the time that you're reporting and then you can save the draft if it's in process or you can submit your timesheet if you're ready for it to be approved and reviewed. So I can go over each of the different steps, but let me give you some important navigation tips that we found um, really helped when we were testing. The browsers that you can use do make a difference. You can use Chrome, Firefox, or Safari, but Internet Explorer is not actually being supported actively by Microsoft and the system that we built and developed does not work on Internet Explorer. So if you seem to get into the system and you're like, I can't find information to add in time, it's probably because you're in Internet Explorer. Go to Chrome. Chrome's really readily available. It's the one that we found works the best with the system itself. And when you get into the timesheet itself, there's a little bit of um, user navigation that I want you to be aware of. It'll save a little bit of frustration as you're entering your time. So when you're entering your time, you're gonna double click on a cell to activate it and then enter your time. And then here's the key, click on the little save icon right next to the cell, then move on to the next cell if, that you wanna enter time in. So let me show you what that might look like. When you go in, so here's the actual information from the page. You can see it looks very similar to the timesheets we've always had, so we tried to keep it very much um, familiar to what we've had, and the time categories are mostly the same, and they work the same way. So, and there's tips at the top in terms of, you know, what do you do? Oh, okay, edit a cell, double click on it, and then save the icon. So, when you go to enter time, if you double click on the cell, it'll, it'll activate the box, it'll highlight the number that's in there, and you can change it. If you were to tab away from that box or click on another box at this point, it would just leave it as it was. So if there was a 10 and I was trying to change it to eight and I didn't push the little save icon and I just started clicking someplace else, it would stay at 10. So in order to save the changes I've made, I have to click on the little save icon next to the numbers, then go to the next box, click on, double click on that and activate that. So that's a navigation, um, or usage input methodology that is critical to easily using this timesheet. So let's go through the different steps that I discussed in terms of using and accessing the timesheet. First, you're going to need to log into my gateway. I sent that out to you in that initial email that I had sent out letting you know this was coming, and that was the one thing you had to make sure you could do, which is to go into a browser, preferably Chrome, 
go to your campus website or however you have your My Gateway login area saved and then click on My Gateway icon and then log in using your My Gateway ID and password. If you've never been into My Gateway and you don't know how to get to even just the login section for My Gateway, it is available on every one of our web pages um, on the landing page. So if you go to the district website or you go to Cypress College, Fullerton College, or NOCE's website, at the top of the page, on the very first page, will be an icon or a link that says My Gateway. When you click on that, it will take you to the login page. If you don't know your ID, it's your banner ID. If you don't know your password, it is something you can reset at that location. And if you don't know your ID, look on your badge, but also I believe there's additional help links on the login page. So if you have difficulty logging into my gateway, access that help that's there and you'll be able to get in. And if not, I believe there's a link that um, lets you know how you might be able to access it. Once you're in my gateway though, because I believe with all my heart that you'll all be able to get into it, go to the employee tab. And the way that you get into the employee tab is if you have it saved as your main tab, that'll be fine. But if you don't know where it is, there's a list on the left side of the page that looks a little bit like this. And the employee is the link to get to that employee page. If you can't see anything and it looks more like this, then what you can do is you can click on this. It'll drop the box underneath it open and then the employee tab will, will appear. So you click on that. Once you get to the employee page, there is a section with employee links and this is the icon you're looking for, CMET. It's the Classified and Confidential's monthly electronic timesheet and that's what you're going to click on to get to the landing page for the timesheet system itself. And this is that landing page. So you'll get here and you'll see that there are several different options, not all of which are available to everybody. But one of the things um, where you're going to go is you're going to enter your time by clicking on this icon. Something to note is that we are letting you know here what, um, what the default emails and supervisor information is per banner. And so if you're not getting emails from the timesheet system, because it will generate an email letting you know your timesheet's been approved and by whom, or if your supervisor is saying, you know what, I'm not, I'm not getting your stuff, then those things need to be corrected. And we've provided that information here for you so you can see it. So this is Jane Smith's preferred email address and banner. And this is Jane's um, immediate management supervisor in banner. So if that's incorrect, they'd contact their immediate supervisor. If the email is incorrect, they would go into my gateway and, address, and change your um, email address. But everybody's email address should be defaulted to your campus email address because this is a campus timesheet. So, all right, that being said, once you click into the monthly timesheet, you'll be able to start entering your time. So it looks like this. Again, your name and your ID, your position number, the information we're used to seeing, at the top of the timesheet is there, as well as the month in which you're entering. The status right now is blank because this is a timesheet that's in process. Once it's submitted, it would then say timesheet submitted. So you'd be filling in your time. You double click on this, as I mentioned, enter your time, save the little icon. If you have anything to say about that time, you can add the explanation here. And once again, I don't know why I'm really stressing this. I think it was the one point that really frustrated our testers is that it took them a moment to realize they had to save every time. Um, and really, you'll only find that frustration the first few times that you start to enter time. And then you'll realize very quickly that, oh, I just have to hit the little click button and it saves the, the time and I can move on. So across the top of the timesheet, as we're used to seeing, are the different categories of time that you would report or leaves. So the leaves, they're very similar to what we're used to seeing. The explanations for them and the usage of those has not changed. There are, however, a few new categories that have been added and they're temporary and they're related to your regular hours and your overtime hours. Because of our current pandemic situation are and we do have some MOUs that pay a slight premium if you have to come on site to do any of your work or if you have to do overtime but you ended up having to be on site there's an additional slight premium that's associated with that currently 
if those MOUs change, um, the pandemic circumstances resolve, the, the premium um, is phased out or eliminated, then the, the, those two columns that I'm about to go over don't um, in, impact your time reporting at all. So they're just temporary, but we wanted you to be aware of them because you may not have realized that your time has been reported this way for the last few months um, in terms of the pandemic. So your regular hours, that's your normal scheduled time. But if you were to come on site and do any of that time on site, you would report that in a separate category. So we would know to add the slight premium to that time. So here, as you can see, this person worked 40 hours that week. This was our summer schedule, so they had 10 hours each day. But realize that on Monday, the 10 hours they worked as a regular schedule was actually eight hours of regular, in this circumstance, it would be remote time, but regular time, and then two hours on site. So that's how they would report that. You wouldn't report all of the time, like it wouldn't be 10 hours on site unless you actually had to come in for the whole day and do your whole shift on site. Then the other on site category we have is the overtime. So overtime is overtime that's work on top of your regular schedule. And on site overtime is if you had to do that on site. So in this example here, this is when we went back to our regular eight hour day. We have a, a whole schedule of a week, it's 40 hours, the eight hours of regular work, and then the person had to come in on site maybe to print out this state report and take it back home and do some more work. So you can see that they had eight hours of regular time on that day. They did have to come on site for an hour and then they did continue to work an additional two hours of overtime off site. And the next day, um, two more additional hours of on site overtime. And some explanations were added to here that relates to that overtime. Usually these are the things that we might put on the side of the timesheet for our managers to be aware of. And then pay out the overtime is something that you might put in because you're asking for payroll to be aware that um, you're requesting for that time to be paid out. And so, you know, here, this is the regular hours, eight hour days. And then, you know, this, this employee had to work a really long day on Monday, a long day on Tuesday, and then back to regular hours the rest of the week. So that's what it looks like across the top. You've got all the different categories and you would enter in your time as you go. If you had an explanation, that location is here. And you can see that in this sample timesheet, we've added in some explanations that relate to the time that's being reported. You do want to make sure that you explain or identify the category that you're talking about here because there's no way to know unless you say, I'm talking about the overtime or I'm talking about my vacation here. And at the bottom of the timesheet is a box available to you if you wanted to add some information or a note to your manager. Not related to the actual time you're reporting in, in the sense that it's not about um, clarifying a specific line item, but if there was a message you needed to communicate to your manager, it will you have the opportunity to enter in the time here or not the time you enter in that information here. Just so you know, this is only for you to communicate to your manager. The payroll department's not gonna be looking at this information or accessing it when they're processing your timesheet. So don't put anything that you need to have adjusted for your time in here. It's just for your manager to know. And when the timesheet is returned to you, comments will appear here. There's a history of the dialogue between you and your manager might appear here as well. So once you start entering your time, um, again, at the bottom of the page, there'll be an, a box, a little icon for you to save the draft. So if you want to save it and look at it completely just one more time before you submit it, you can do that. If you saved it, let's say the 25th came around and you're like, I'm going to enter the rest of my month already, but I won't submit it yet. I'm going to save it. You can do that as well. And then once you're ready to actually submit your timesheet, you can go in, um, check it out, make sure it looks okay. And then you're going to check this little box here, which acknowledges your responsibility for accurate reporting, and then you'll click on this giant submit bar. So the submit bar is really easy to get to. Just click on the agree to make sure that you understand that you are responsible for acknowledging the accurate reporting of time and that you're going to submit it. Once you submit that time, um, it'll move the timesheet forward. So now let's talk about this impact. So the timesheet will open 
on the 25th of each month. You'll have until midnight on the last day of the month to submit your timesheet. So that's just how the system is set up. But even if you enter your time when the timesheet opens for the whole month, since things can change and you're not supposed to be projecting your time, you need to wait until the last day of the work you the last day that you work that month in order to submit your timesheet. So I'm gonna give you some examples visually in case that helps as well. So let's say here is the end of the month and I made up this month, so this is not indicative of the actual days of August, but it's just indicative of a Monday through Sunday schedule. So let's say it's 25th and timesheet opened, that's a Monday and if the 29th is Friday and that's your last day that you're working that month and this is what your, your work week might look like and you started entering your time on the 25th and you went ahead and put in everything, but then on Thursday, and you saved it, and on Thursday, you actually ended up being out sick, so you come back in on Friday and you change that and then you submit your timesheet at the end of your work day and then you enjoy the rest of your weekend and hopefully you're still not sick. If you were gonna be on vacation, so let's say you, you're like, okay, I'm not here the last week of the month or the last five days of the month, whatever it is, well, you're working on a few days here, so you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're working, and that's the last work day for you for that month because you're on vacation after that. Complete out your timesheet on the 27th, and put in your vacation time, and then submit at the end of the work day on the 27th. And then enjoy your vacation and have fun, and hopefully it's post-pandemic so you're out and about enjoying the world. Okay, if you ended up working um, that week and you, you're you like, fine, I'm gonna hold off on everything. And then you realize, wait, I actually need to be working on Sunday. I'm sorry, but that that happens, it happens. And if you're working on Sunday and that was scheduled, then you would wait and submit your timesheet at the end of that work day. So it's not about whether it's a Friday or a Saturday today or a Sunday, but it's about whether you're done working for the month. So basically don't submit until you're done working for the month. And like I said, once you do submit your timesheet, you will get an email at that email address that's noted on the first page. You'll get an email that lets you know that the timesheet, um, what's happening with the timesheet. So if you're a media management supervisor or their designee, they're gonna review the timesheet. If everything looks correct, they'll approve it and you'll be notified of that. If you need to make a correction, then they'll reject it and you'll be asked to correct it and resubmit the timesheet. They might put the information that, they, that you need to look into in the comment section, look at that information, change the timesheet, resubmit it. And so either way, you're gonna get an email and once the timesheet is approved, you'll get an email as well letting you know that. So that's the walkthrough at a high level of the timesheet system. If you have any questions, please feel free to send an email to the email address noted here, the payroll at nocccd.edu, and one of the payroll staff will follow up with you. Thank you and good luck, and we're so excited to have this system in place. I hope that you find that it makes your submission of your time much easier to do and to follow up with. Thank you.